Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Central. If you're new here, my name is Shayla, and today we're going through some of the whiskeys from the Compass Box range. We've got Spice Tree, Story of the Spaniard, and Peat Monster. Compass Box is an independent bottling company started by John Glasser. They don't distill their own spirit, but instead source whiskey from many distilleries around Scotland. They blend it together and then bottle it under their own label. This company is very transparent and I will leave links in the description box below for the exact recipes for each blend so you can see for yourself. Alright, so let's start with Spice Tree. This bottle will run you about $65. It's owned by John Glasser. It's a non-age dated whiskey and it's 46% ABV. Again, I will leave links in the description box for this recipe, but this is a 100% malted barley blended from different distilleries around Scotland, a majority being from Highland and Speyside, like Glen Murray, Balminic, and Tomaton. And then they have some Kleinleash, Daluin, and Chininic as well, which have a waxy character. A majority of the casks used for this whiskey are special, lightly toasted French oak, but there is some first fill and refill ex bourbon in the mix, and this is non-colored and non-chill filtered. All right, those are the details of this whiskey. Let's go on the nose. Oh my goodness. Honestly, this one just smells like all my favorite things. <laughs> there's some spice on there, spice tree. Like, there's a ton of baking spice. A really lovely vanilla cream, one of my favorite things. Another one of my favorite things, almond cream. Like, the inside of a bear claw is what I call it. Oh my God, so good. And then it's really fruity as well. It's on the light fruit side, like nectarine and kind of like a jam, like a really sweet fruity jam, but on the like lighter side, so not like a dark berry fruit, but maybe like apricot jam or something like that. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. And then there's a little bit of hay on here as well. There's kind of like a dry, slightly maybe even herbally kind of thing little bit of oak. Sorry, a little car is driving by with a very loud speaker. All right, let's go on the palate. Cheers. Mmm, it's sweet. There's a really wonderful spice. A little bit of lemon comes up on the palate as well. And then there's a lot of that vanilla cream that comes through. The spice and a little bit of the oak kind of dries out your palate just a little bit on the back end, but that kind of fades away and then just turns into like the general sweetness. Let's go for another sip, cheers. I would say light to medium body. It's got a nice texture. There is a little bit of that Kleinleash, Dalyu, and Chininic uh, waxiness, just a little bit. I would say it's on the lower to medium complexity side, short to medium finish. This is a pretty good jam, but let's see how the story of the Spaniard stacks up. All right, this bottle will run you about $65. It's owned by John Glasser. It's a non-age stated whiskey, and this one is 43% ABV. This is made from 100% malted barley from different distilleries around Scotland. If you go to the Compass Box website, they'll give you a breakdown of what goes into the blend. I left links to these in the description box below, but there's some Craig Allocky, Deanston, Chininic, Kleinleash, and Dal Ewan in this blend. There are a lot of sherry casks in here. There's some red wine and also a little bit of recharred American oak. And this is non-colored and non-chill filtered. All right, those are the details of this whiskey. Let's go on the nose. So it's a little bit nose drying. There's a little bit of a prickle. You can smell the sherry fruit on this, but not as much as you might expect. This is not a sherry bomb. You do get some raisins on here from the sherry casks. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of that almond cream. And then you get some dried apricots, a little bit of honey. All right, let's go on the palate. Cheers. Mm, so it's sweet, a tiny bit drying, kind of all over your mouth, actually. More on the back of the palate, but there is a little bit of drying on the front of the palate. I gotta say, I think it's a pretty wonderful balance, though, of sweet and that little bit of dry. Mm, that sherry fruit comes in really nicely. A little bit of spice as well. It's kind of almost like a Deanston, like a super light ex bourbon cast Deanston, and then uh, some sherried Bonahaben, like the 12 year old. A little bit of that kind of got married in with the Deanston. It's really not as sherried as you would think. It's it's definitely not as sherried as like a Bonahaben 12, but it's got a nice kind of balance of like. A, a very lightly 
sherry kind of dram. Let's go for another sip. Cheers. So it's slightly thin on the palate, a lighter body. Texture is a little bit oily and then dry pretty much immediately goes to dry. There is a tiny little bit of an oiliness to it though. It's very light. I would say it's lower complexity, short, uh, short to medium finish maybe. This is a pretty good dram, but let's see how the Peat Monster stacks up. This bottle will run you about $60. It's owned by John Glasser. It's a non-age stated whiskey and it's 46% ABV. This is made from 100% malted barley, blended from 64% Kalila, 35% Laphroaig, and 1% of their Highland blend. It's aged in a majority of refill ex-bourbon hoggies, and it's non-colored and non-chill filtered. All right, those are the details of this whiskey. Let's go on the nose. Oh man, it's like super pungent on the nose. You can kind of just smell that ex-bourbon cask matured kind of ness <laughs> to it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is super, super clear. And honestly, peated or not, ex-bourbon, like hoggy cask matured whiskeys are some of my favorites, so I'm just excited. <sighs> Get a little bit of iodine. Honestly, if you know what like Kalila 12 and Lafroy 10 smell like, it's basically what this smells like <laughs> combined. It's a little bit floral. Yeah, it's just a little bit floral, super fragrant. That brine comes through really nice. There's also like a little bit of honey. Oh, it smells so good. Let's go on the palate. Cheers. Oh my God. It's so good. It's so good. Wow. So there's a little bit of sweet. There's not a ton going on, but what is going on is just wonderful. So first sensation is sweet. Get a little bit of, uh, not a little bit actually, a lot of apricots. And then there's some smoke, like campfire smoke. Even almost like slightly fragrant, not perfumey campfire smoke, but like a little bit floral, but not in a bad way. And then a little bit of that brine comes through. Ugh, and it's just got a wonderful spice. Let's go for another sip, cheers. It's got good body good texture. I think it has a really nice balance of sweet and smoke. I would say it's on the lower complexity side, medium finish, so a little bit longer than the others. I think that peat just really hangs on the palate. All right, I've drank through all of these. Let's get into my recommendation. If you like peat, you'll really enjoy the peat monster. I think it has a really nice balance of Kalila and Laphroaig. I personally love Laphroaig, so if it's got Laphroaig in it, I'm probably gonna like it. <laughs> If you like light and slightly waxy flavors, I think you'll enjoy the Spice Tree. Although personally, I do think I like the Deanston 12 and Kleinleash 14 a little bit better than this, but this is still really nice. And if you want a lightly sherried whiskey, the story of the Spaniard is wonderful. Although I do wish that it had a higher ABV, the 43% just leaves a little bit to be desired. That being said, I think independent bottlers like Compass Box are doing a great job of giving whiskey enthusiasts what they want at a decent price higher ABV, non-colored, non-chill filtered, and tons of transparency. It doesn't really get much better than this in my book. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whiskey Central. Next week, I'll be reviewing something that my patrons vote on, so if you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. I hope you enjoyed this little rundown. If you did, leave it a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Oh, crap. I forgot to say this at the beginning. Stanley Wagner is the one that sent me this little compass box set. Comes in this adorable little box. It's very nice. So thank you so much Swagner over at the mash bill for hooking me up, hooking a girl up. I appreciate it. Oh dang it guys. So usually I try to have a break in between filming. So I'll like film one day, take a break or like edit or research or whatever, but I won't film multiple days in a row. But I'm filming today, and then I have a VPUB tomorrow, and then I have a break, and then I have another live stream the next day. So, a lot of filming in a very short window of time, but it's going good. Boom! Motherfucker, we have a kitchen now done! This bottle will run you about $60. It's owned by John Glasser. Fuck. I'm filming two videos today. Filmed the Wild Turkey Rare Breed already, and then I'm almost done filming this. 
I am not having as many bloopers as you guys might like. <laughs> so, so sorry. I feel like especially with these kind of, not verses necessarily, but just anything where I'm going through a range, it's a little bit of a choppier video, but I don't have as many bloopers because I kind of just go through the details and then go through my tasting notes. There isn't a bunch of history for me to mess up or anything like that. So sorry that there's no bloopers, guys. <laughs> Maybe there's gonna be some, I don't, I don't remember, but. <laughs> Back to Whiskey Central. If you're new here, my name is Shayla. And today we're, shit. <laughs>